Um, all right, let's run through this. Uh, top five best hires of the college basketball cycle so far. Obviously, there's still more to be to be made, and um, these are the big ones. The big jobs uh, outside of Oklahoma State uh, have now mostly been filled, especially with Louisville getting filled today. Number five, Kyle Smith at Stanford. Uh, Washington State was a fun team to watch, and they they scrapped uh, in the NCAA tournament this year. Uh, Stanford, uh, in football and basketball, has just not been on the scene in the last few years, and this is an athletic de- department that – prides itself on being good at everything, but the two big ones that just kind of faded into the background lately. And as they move into the ACC, they're going to need, I'm a, I am like, feel like I'm, I'm uh, drinking whiskey. I was about to hit you yeah. in the back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but as they move into the ACC, a basketball league that clearly means business, you got to have a new coach. You got to have somebody uh, that can win and recruit the West coast and, and kind of dominate there. And I think that Kyle Smith is that dude. And again, for Wazoo, it sucks, but this is going to keep happening because of the future. By the way, one of the most emotional parts of his press conference today was talking about one of the schools within Stanford was uh, autistic-driven, uh, and he has, a, I think, a, a son or a daughter that's autistic. And He's got a son. How much that oh, – he got very emotional knowing that that is something they could look forward to when they move down – to uh, be a part of the Cardinals. Yeah, he's got a teenage son named Bo who has autism, and he cited Stanford's incredible academic work and their work in that field and their services as being a big uh, pull for or enticement to to head to Stanford. So I thought that that was unique and not something that any of us consider. Oh, yeah, these coaches have personal lives, guys. Did you know that? Yeah. Do you know they have like actual personal mm-hmm. things that, that maybe – make them want to change jobs besides just the money. I'm sure the money was good too, but yeah, that seems like another feather in Stanford's cap. Um, I think we forget just how great that university truly is, like because we get so lost in the wins and losses sometimes. But, um, you know, he also did say, though, whatever, I wasn't going to leave where I am, except for this one job here. This yeah. is the one that, like, you know, it's like, okay, okay. But, the, no, the, the part, the anecdote about the, uh, the autism – services that they have was uh, was a cool one and yeah uh, I think he's got a great opportunity there and it was also cited in one of the articles I read that uh, Wazoo's uncertainty in conference realignment yep. is is something that played into his decision as well like Stanford's got a spot it's a new spot but it's a spot and you couldn't guarantee that with Wazoo and, and look even if the ACC falls apart Stanford clearly was big enough to get in that league so they'll figure it out yeah you know Stanford's Stanford's got they could have honestly gone independent and been fine. They really could have. Like they have enough money to do that for a little while until they if they found their spot, but they obviously didn't have to. Number four, Mark Byington at Vandy. Vandy fans, get ready. It's about to get fun on your basketball court. If you watch James Madison play this year, especially if you watch their games in the tournament, they go, man. They have they run up and down the court. They play fast. They play hard. I loved watching their style of basketball. Uh, this is going to be fun for Vandy, and it sucks that Jerry Stackhouse didn't work out there. It sucks that Bryce Drew didn't work out there before him, but I do think if you're going to get somebody who's going to have a super fun style, bringing it in there that can can shoot some energy into the program, Mark Byington, a fantastic choice. Man, James Madison was so fun to watch this year. Uh, very curious to see how his style works in the SEC, and I hope he doesn't you know, pull a shaka and go, oh, I don't have to do this in the SEC. Yes, you do. You're at Vandy. I think he'll do that, but they were fun, man. James Madison's probably one of the schools that's been directly affected the most, yeah, uh, yeah. you would think, here in the last couple of years by just all of the changes. But, yeah, it seems to be a, a great hire on paper. You know, Vandy's just kind of – I know in baseball it's different, but – like I don't know the last time I thought about Vanderbilt basketball was like I was just like oh I realize they still have a program they're just mm-hmm. so in the weeds but um, you know is that one of those schools that you look at and you go okay we're never going to win the football title but if we pull our resources right we're obviously very good in baseball I can't speak to all their other sports because I don't follow it closely enough but Vanderbilt baseball oh yeah you okay. said baseball yeah, yeah. I, like I don't know about track and field and stuff mm-hmm. but right. um, but yeah basketball is a, a route that I think a lot of schools who maybe are, that have to be realistic of like that's your that's your probably that maybe your go to like that that is where your big winners are um so anyways um with Vandy I think that's their best because they're not going to win in football like they're never going to win in football with all due respect in that league but uh yeah he seems to be a, a very well liked guy and a good coach and so let's see what he does number 3 Denny Sprinkle at UW 
Uh, clearly won the press conference today by absolutely trashing Washington State yeah. uh, and the city of Pullman, which they'll love in Seattle. Uh, and uh, but look, you saw Utah State, and look, he's done it, and he he's had to move a couple times, but he's now hit the big time now going into the Big Ten next year. It'll be interesting to see um, what Washington does. Uh, they're whole athletic departments had to be rebuilt in the last couple of months uh, and really fast. But, you know, Kalen DeBoer, athletic director, basketball coach, uh, now with Danny Sprinkle. Uh, and having all that flux at once, I, I think just watching Washington as a program next year will be interesting to see how they, they kind of bounce back from all this because, you know, given how much change happened so fast, like let's let's give them all a mulligan, you know, on <laughs> on how they figure this out because things move so fast and furious. But Danny Sprinkle will do well there. Yeah, he uh, he apparently you know made a choice very quickly after uh, getting beat, uh, getting eliminated, and so uh, this happened uh, pretty quickly. I, I thought the most notable thing that I had come across was Utah State will now have to hire their sixth coach in the last ten years. It just seems like a lot of hiring uh six and ten years but uh yeah that's that's part of the deal i'm sure there's a variety of reasons for why but yeah it's been uh quite the turnover at the university of washington and yet they seem to be landing on their feet pretty well at every turn you know like hey we lost kaylin to board jet fish seems like a pretty good hire and, and so on and so forth so uh yeah this it's gonna be a fascinating little trek into the big 10 and just seeing uh Seeing all of the the acclimation process for all these schools moving to new leagues over the next year is going to be really interesting. Just getting used to it, just in general, seeing the Big Ten logo on certain jerseys and the SEC and so forth, but a lot of changes uh, around the coaching ranks too. Number two, Dusty May at Michigan. Uh, and at most times he would be number one, but number one uh, is coming here in a second. Uh, this is great for Michigan in two regards. He was... And this is, you know, Indiana fans are already mad about it. But if Mike Woodson has a good year next year, they'll they'll hopefully forget. But he was the like backup plan of like, okay, well, Mike Woodson doesn't work out. You know, Dusty May, former Bobby Knight team manager, he's gonna want to come home. He's gonna want to be here with us. Uh, you know, back where he belongs at Indiana. Indiana and Louisville are kind of in the same spot. They kind of need to look at their program a little bit differently uh, than how it used to be. Uh, Michigan. It's not too far removed from being a very elite team. I mean, shoot, uh, what, 2017, 2018? 2018. Yeah, 2018, they were in the in the championship game. So uh, they're not far off from that. Uh, Jawan Howard just didn't work out. Um, sometimes, you know, the guys who are the alma mater, that's their alma mater, it works out. You know, it, it worked out for Roy Williams at UNC. It looks like it's going well for Hubert Davis at UNC. It didn't work out for one of the Fab Five uh, at Michigan for for various reasons. Dusty May comes in there, you know, riding a heater from last year and this year, uh, and uh, rolls into Michigan, a Midwest guy, and ready to go. And uh, the double bonus of hurting a rival uh, in the Big Ten in Indiana. Go ahead. Um, yeah, this is not Scott Drew uh, or Dusty May at Louisville. Uh, that was a little bit of a shocker. Yeah. Not so much Drew, but then May getting swooped up by Michigan. That had to be a, a punch in the gut for a lot of Cardinals fans. But, yeah, seems like a great hire for the Wolverines. Obviously, very successful program over the years. And um, – Got a lot of uh, ammunition in your arsenal there uh, in Ann Arbor. So, yeah, uh, seems like a great hire and, and one of the bigger names we heard this cycle. And number one, Darian DeVries at West Virginia. And he's number one over Dusty May because Dusty May does not bring an NBA talented spawn with him like Darian DeVries does. He's bringing a, a you know, who will be the – Oh, I mean, he may not be the best player on the team, but he'll be one of the best players of the team. And if he's not, that means that they got in the portal and got somebody uh, even better. But to have your son to build the team around at West Virginia, unless he transfers somewhere else, but he's in the portal, this makes it number one. They're going to love his style there at West Virginia. It's going to be a nice um, – you know, change for them uh, after, you know, there's a lot of pain, you know, when Bob Huggins, uh, who, you know, they really liked at, at WVU, uh, leaves. But, yeah, I, I love this hire, uh, and it, it's going to come uh, hitting the ground running. Yeah, excited for West Virginia to have their guy. And I uh, know it's been a long wait over the last few months with the whole Huggins situation and want to know what the future was going to look like. But all indicators uh, point to this being a really good hire and uh, excited to see, you know, what uh, – what they look like with uh, under new management, I guess you could say, um, because it's been a long time coming. 
uh, these the past few months. It seems longer than a few months. seems like it's been like a couple of years for them kind of waiting for what the future is going to look like. Uh, it hasn't, but it's felt that way at times. So I can only imagine from a WV fan perspective – uh, the drawing out of it, how that's been. So you got your guy. People seem excited about it. Time to get to work and see what he can do for a, a very proud program there in the Mountaineers. By the way, when's Oklahoma State going to hire their basketball coach? You'd hope they, they, here they're, soon. They're, they're kind of twisted in the wind right now, aren't they? That's been yeah, a long I mean, time. I haven't followed it super and, closely. I just expected one day I was going to wake up. Four hirings this yeah. week, yeah. i just wondering where that is at this point because it's it's been – uh, you know, a process clearly that they still haven't found a guy when everybody else is seemingly filling their job. So uh, maybe there's just some, you know, thing behind the scenes we're not aware of on the boards. I don't know, but uh, just curious now because that's obviously a big job still open. Paul, you need to figure that out. The top I five do. Oklahoma State candidates. No, I did no. that already. Uh, Oklahoma State? Yeah. Yeah, 